There is this Korean word called Jim, very much like J I M. When Koreans say Jim, it means burden. You should not be a burden. Is a message that has been inculcated into our minds. The complexity, color, and vitality of the Korean American experience. Today on World in America. For thousands of years, Koreans have thrived as a distinct people with a culture and language uniquely their own. In the 20th century, the aftermath of occupation and war left Korea divided and torn. By 1953, two countries stood on one ravaged land. Soon, however, many Koreans would turn their plight into a drive for excellence. From the ashes, South Korea was reborn. A world away, Korean Americans would be hailed an immigrant success story. On this episode, we'll meet Korean Americans from different walks of life to learn their take on a remarkable picture. Dr. Kil J. Yi came to the U.S. 30 years ago. Now a professor of history and a long-term New Yorker, he paints one view of Korean Americans, drawn with the eye of a scholar and colored by experiences of a former immigrant. One of the dreams of many Korean parents in Korea is to send their kids to America and let them receive American education. Now, that really is a dream because not many people can afford to send their kids to America to pursue their education. So, better way is to immigrate to America and give all the children the best possible education that my parents thought can be obtained in America. So, we are relatively comfortable in Korea. But we all thought that if we go to America, my, with the kids, we'll receive the best possible education. And that was the primary force behind our uh, six family members packing and coming to America. Today, generations of Korean Americans call the U.S. home. Dr. Yi traces the roots of a vibrant community. How did this community begin? We have to go back to the beginning of the 20th century when Korea was a, a colony of Japan. There, there was a small group of intellectuals who came to study in America at the same time start some sort of movement for their independence from their Japanese colonial uh, masters. Thousands more came after the Korean War. In addition to adopted children and the bridges of veterans, America welcomed a few talented individuals. Come 60s, professionals came, mostly doctors and nurses, and some foreign students who wanted to pursue PhD degrees in America. Up until that point, it was a very small community. Miss Ok Ja Lim has music in her soul. Years ago, she left Korea in pursuit of education. A graduate of Juilliard, Lim has graced opera stages across Europe and the United States. The acclaimed soprano remembers a time when things weren't so effortless. When I left my country at the time, it wasn't easy to go abroad to study, you know, and lots of preparation legally also, you know, restriction. But Tough time, we had it, but we had a strong faith in ourselves and in God as a, just lead us in the right place. Beginning in the 70s, that petitioning became popular. 
So imm Korean immigrants who are already here begin to petition their siblings to come to America. And that kind of opened the floodgate, so to speak, where many people receive the petition invitation from their relatives who already live here in the United States and in New York, and they join that exodus allowed by the petitioning. Miss Gloria Yi works as a certified public accountant. Together, she and her husband, Dr. Yi, raised their two daughters in New York City. She looks back to her own childhood and how the end of quotas had brought her family a new beginning. Um, I came here when I was 11 years old uh, from Korea, Seoul. I'm one of the nine girls from my family. There's nine girls, in our, just girls in our family. Um, all of us came here together. Um, we came here because of my father's business um, was not doing well in Korea, so we came here for the better opportunity for all of us. Americans would soon grow into the community they are today. By 80s, the Korean community became quite sizable in this area, 100,000, and it increased to 200,000. And as I said, at this point, it is estimated that in the tri-state area, Koreans number more than 400,000 at this point. By some estimates, nearly 2 million Koreans now live in the U.S largely in California, New York, and surrounding areas. Among them are a number of dynamic individuals drawn here by America's cultural mix. Ms. Sumi Ro is one of them. The very first instance that I came to um, America was when, um, after my initial um, studies in university, that I, before I go to graduate school, I wanted to discover some world on my own and to see at least like what um, kind of other, I mean, people in the world actually um, live and do. So I spent about three and a half months traveling around the world on my own. And the first destination was actually um, America. Rose's zeal for the Big Apple ripened into a job with the UN. The architect, wife, and mother is also an accomplished pianist. Miss Sun Kwok matches a Korean sense of focus with an independent modern style. Seen here in an installation hosted by chic designer Salvatore Ferragamo, her work speaks to audiences far and wide. I came here 14 years, years ago to study, and uh, the reason why I came here to, to experience broad um, uh, cultural experience as an artist. Back then, I thought that um, uh, the art in America is the, the center of the world, so I wanted to go directly to the center. Making your way in a new country doesn't happen overnight. Koreans forging ahead in America often face a number of challenges. The first major shock was the language. I had two years of relatively primitive English instruction, and my English was not adequate. It was not enough. First of all, I didn't understand English at all. So I didn't speak a word of English. And uh, we were staying with our cousins who were born here. I can communicate. Uh, still, I can communicate. But, you know, still, I can't really, like, fully explore, explore my uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, and also the, uh, the nuance of the language. It's hard to catch. Let me give you a good example. I landed in the airport and I wanted to go to the bathroom. And I asked people, where is WC? And that's how I learned that bathroom is WC, white closet. So I went around asking people, WC, WC, and no one was able to tell me what WC or where WC is actually. So it was uh, quite a painful experience starting from the airport. The larger issue was language. Past the hurdles of language, many run into stereotypes. Although we have a good side of culture, that um, a lot of Koreans, Americans, like um, I, whether it be it in a food or in a music or in a schools, um, a lot of people think that Koreans are very diligent. The Koreans really study, um, make their kids study like um, really well. 
Koreans are known to be very diligent and they are very hard working as well as very, very hard studying people. And I think those positive prejudices are, are valid. Koreans came here not with a whole lot of money in their pockets or bank accounts, but with modest means. And you can tell that, especially in, the New, York, in, in New York City, there are a lot of Korean-owned and operated shops. And they literally change the way we buy and consume things. Most of the Korean shops open 24 hours. That could be perceived as a sign of diligence. It could also give off a wrong impression that Koreans, all they wanted to do is make money. But one thing is quite clear, that because of these shops that are open 24 hours, 365 days, we can just go out, walk out into the street at any time of the day or night and buy what we want and what we need. Despite certain setbacks, Korean Americans have worked hard to turn negatives into positives. As artists and entrepreneurs, scholars and professionals, they waste no time in sharing the fruits of their culture, their passion, and energy. As you have to like really struggle to show uh, and to prove yourself in every other thing, in our music, our art, and our studies, and our um, culture and food, and, and the, cult, the kind of people's behavior in the restaurants and all that, I think we developed um, the good points about it, like we excel in everything that we do. For well, my American or European friends, first of all, they like to get to know our culture first. The culture means our tradition, uh, music, and food, and costume. And personally, when they get to know who we are, then they felt comfortable. 안녕하세요. 편집 레스라 아 편집 씨가 아 박혜화입니다. She said 안녕하세요. That means in English um, hi or how are you? And her name is Hewa Pa. At Kunjip, authenticity starts at home. Kunjip is Korean for older brother. Stop by this Manhattan restaurant and hospitality takes on a new meaning. Owner Miss Hewa Pa makes every dish with mother's care. She and her daughter, Miss Christina Yang, reveal the spice and sizzle of one heartfelt cuisine. When we think of the Korean food in the United States, is that um, the rice, basically rice and some spicy soup, and a lot of side dishes, which includes the kimchi and a lot of vegetables, and sometimes there's fish, and also the barbecue, which, had, which is like bulgogi or galbi, and um, Fish, fish, and lots of vegetable dishes. This is a um, uh, steamed rice in a stone pot, hot stone pot. These are the kimchi, radish. I mean, this is radish. This is cabbage. These are the, all the vegetables. Um, this is a bulgogi. It's called the japchae, which is a fried uh, potato noodle with a vegetable and some meat, if you want meat, whip meat, or if you want seafood, you can, you can go with the seafood. This is a stone hot bibimbap, as she said. Bibimbap is a rice with a lot of vegetable and a um, little bit of beef in there and egg yolk. This is a Korean traditional beef stew, spicy beef stew, uh, with a lot of vegetable inside. This one is the another bibimbap, but my mom made it. Um, this is a tofu bibimbap, so it, this is for the vegetarian. 
This is another bibimbap. This is a stone hut, uh, the squid bibimbap. This was a created created by yeah, the, our customer Steven, but he said it's like a Steven uh, <laughs> squid bibimbap. It's called sundubu jjigae. That is tofu soup. Um, it's made with the seafood and a little bit of vegetable. This is called a tenjang jjigae. It's, it's a uh, bean paste soup, but in Japanese. You know, the miso soup, it's like a miso soup. This is a grilled fish, grilled mackerel. Um, yeah, we, um, we serve this, um, the, the fish for the breakfast mostly. It's really good, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ancient and varied, the traditional music of Korea excites and inspires. There are instruments that shimmer. and songs full of comedic folly. <laughs> Dances of symmetry and grace. Meet whirling celebrations of a farmer at harvest. Gatherings around the country, Korean Americans take pride in their heritage. This concert in New York joined local performers with those direct from Korea. The dance is known as bukchum. They play the drums of ecstasy. The music and motion invoke the harmony of creation. All towards heaven, tradition says, and the sound of a community lifted in joy. I think, to me personally, culture already starts from um, what you feel inside and how you reflect or radiate what you feel inside. That, as in a group, it sort of um, radiates to the, the, the third party who perceives you or the whole Koreans themselves. Beyond festive displays and bright holidays, Korean Americans honor the deeper hallmarks of their culture. Language is one, commitment to family, they say, is another. The importance of respect for elders, that's very, very important. And sometimes it can be a point of contention between the first generation Koreans and second generation younger Koreans. In old days, you know, grandparents and you know, grandchildren, they all live in the one house and they have a res respect for elderly people. I feel that this, um, there is a problem or this, this idea of, about the notion of the filial piety that we were taught and we were taught to, um, and were brought up to respect, it's, it's in a way, um, unfortunately, it's like eroding away. The expression, I am tired, as a parent, has no bearing on my children. When they wanted to go play in the playground, my urgent plea that I am very tired 
does not register in their mind. You know what their response is? You are tired, but we are not. So we'll enjoy it, so let's go to the playground. So, suppose my father came home and said, I'm very tired. I'll fetch him a glass of water. And I'll volunteer to do massage. And I'll try to make him feel better. However, for my kids, although, although they are very generous with helping me in many other areas, when it comes to their individual happiness, mine comes second, third, or behind to their individual happiness. I think that's a kind of, you know, little subtle example, but I think it can be found in many, many homes of Korean American community. Families must also tackle broader issues of identity. In this kind of, you know, mixed um, um, society already in the family, starting from family, it's always a challenge because my little boy comes to me and asks me about like, Oh, you know, in school, I learned that like, um, I can do this kind of thing. Like, why, why do I have to do it in a Korean way? And we sent him to like Korean school for a weekend, Saturday school. He says, I want to go for like um, swimming. I want to go for like birthday party, which is like big thing for a five-year-old. But then we say, that he says, why do I have to speak Korean? Why do I have to go to Korean school? But he gets all like high when we go to like, like watch the or like World Cup or you know this Korean um, community then he raves his flag really with a um, pride. You may keep your American personality and character but you have capacity and ability to add more. We're not asking you to ch choose side. We are asking you to hold the two precious gifts on your hand simultaneously. In the search for balance, Korean Americans aren't alone. As Ms. Rowe and the others remind us, making the most of our diversity is a challenge society faces as a whole. Like certain parts of America, I felt there was pretty um, closed up. There's a degree of like not that openness and being um, liberty and all these kind of things. But I felt New York is like you try to accept and to live with all kinds of different people from different places and you actually um, grow together with all these different ethnic communities. American sense of acceptance comes from the fact that it is imperative. It is a must. If this society loses that sense of acceptance, then we are going to have the biggest cultural battlefield in the world. So it's an imperative that we learn to accept each other, no matter how different we are at times. So it's a must to begin with. And second, I think we are culturally aware as a society that it is really beautiful to listen to music of different tradition, dances of different tradition, to taste different food that use, use different spices. So I really do feel that Generally speaking, as a population, Americans do have capacity to taste and try a different things, more so than the societies that I have been to. to be um, thankful for what this country or place that you live in at the moment gives you and where that's where you are like um, carrying on your life daily and mixing and mingling with people around but it also there's something um, that actually you came from like not really even if you're not born here it's, like, it's something that you carry yourself and I, th I think that really makes you a rich person in both identity and the way you think, the way you eat, the way you behave, the way you um, live and talk to people.
We are taught to ask before we act. Are you becoming a burden to someone or something? And we try very hard not to be a jing, a burden. And I think this is a generalization, of course, but Korean Americans share that teaching and keep that teaching in their hearts. Try not to be a burden to others or to the society at large. I think that's the, one of the reasons why we as a community try to be productive, as productive as we can, and learn, devote our time to learning so that we can be independent and not becoming chim, burden to anybody else. We are not successful all the time. We are a community of imperfection. However, that certainly is a foundation on which we stand as a community. Oh, oh, oh.